Oh my gosh. Probably. Yeah. Let's do that. It's massive. Banana flower. Beautiful. I've, I've tried this before. Chayote? I don't know how to say it. Chayote. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just omit the ch part. Cherimoya, it's a fruit. It's really soft. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that soft. so pretty. They are gorgeous. Show my hand for scale. And it's only $11.99. That is huge. That's perfect for outside. You could set up a whole station. We got Bulba, instant Bulba. Mine. All right, and we just got back home from checking out um, two different Asian markets, which I haven't been to before. Um, a new friend has just turned me on to those two different places, and I'm very thankful because I found some goodies. Um, my kids will be so happy. I got some mochi, a couple different flavors. Those are going to be so yummy. And um, in here, I've got some, not that we need more soy sauce, but I saw a Pinterest um, idea to make hummingbird feeders out of these soy sauce jars. So, I'm going to see if that works or not, and if it does, I'll post a video of that at some point in the future. Sometimes I get a little scammed by the ideas that don't actually end up working, but I will not pass on ideas that don't work to you guys. I'll make sure that I vet those ideas really well. So from this store here, I also got, um, these are the Japanese sweet potatoes, and Okinawan sweet potatoes. So that is um, always exciting. I have more of the Okinawan sweet potatoes inside. Um, actually have them setting on soil, hopefully making them think that they should set down some roots. And I plan on growing these. The Okinawan sweet potatoes um, really got turned on to the idea of growing these from the blue zone diet. Um, people in Okinawa, Japan live longer than in other areas of the world. So one, they attribute that partially to um, their diet. And so I really want to grow these sweet potatoes. In the other bag, um, some experiments, things to try out. We've got, I don't know how to say this, but these are jackfruit chips. And I do love jackfruit. It is so delicious. It tastes kind of like juicy fruit gum. 
and I've planted some jackfruit seeds um, in my classroom. I got that idea from the friend who came with me today as well. So jackfruit trees, way too tropical and warm climate for this area, but I have them growing as a house plant and they're really good. So I'm going to give the jackfruit chips a try and see if I like those. I can't tell if these peanuts are raw or not, but if they're raw, then some of them could sprout. I also did um, an order from nuts.com. I bought some raw, um, I think it was the Valencia uh, peanuts, and I have grown raw jungle peanuts from nuts.com as well, and they did grow. I need to, needed to actually plant them earlier in the year than I did last time because I didn't have enough time to produce a crop. But they did sprout and grow into really cute little plants. So I'm going to give these a try and see if I can get any of these to sprout. I can't tell. They look like they are, are raw from just from looking at them. But we'll see for sure. We'll give that a try. I did a previous video on buying sprouting seeds in bulk and how much money you'd save by doing that. Um, I have purchased coriander or cilantro seeds in bulk um, as microgreen seeds and like pound in poundage um, because we really go through a lot of cilantro. When I was younger, I hated cilantro. I thought it was just tasted like soap to me. And I actually read that a lot of people um, either love it or hate it. And that there actually, there's a genetic predisposition, um, like a genetic marker or something for people who actually, it tastes like soap to them. And I don't know if it was just the years of exposure to my husband, you know, my husband's uh, Hispanic and, um, he makes a lot of salsas and things with cilantro. And I don't know if it was the exposure over the many, many years being married over 20 years to that, but I had COVID. And when I had COVID, I lost my sense of taste. And when I was relearning flavors, a lot of things tasted horrible, like tasted like trash or sewage. And it was just bad. And, um, but when my taste reset, now I love, now I love it. So go figure. Um, I'm really hit or miss with onions now. Onions can make me gag. Um, before I just always loved all onions. Didn't matter if they were sweet or, you know, spicy, more like different flavored of onions. But, um, so now I'm kind of weird with onions. I'm weird with watermelon and sometimes bananas and some other flavors that I can't quite pinpoint that are like my brain didn't rewire what they're supposed to taste like. Um, but now I love cilantro and it's such a blessing because it's so healthy and, um, that way we don't have to all eat different things either because my family really likes the hat to have cilantro in salsas and we have salsa all the time. And so we like to grow masses and masses of, of this. And when you buy a packet of seeds and they're like $4 for a bit, little, just a couple seeds, um, 50 is a couple, I guess. I, I guess I would call 50 a couple. <laughs> um, when it comes to, to cilantro, I have to just plant masses of it. So that is why I bought this. And in case you don't know, most people probably, probably know this too, but, um, coriander, coriander and cilantro are the same thing. So in Europe, a lot of people, um, are more into the seeds and like the this is like the mature uh, plant material, the seeds. And um, if you are growing it for the greens, you're, you're picking it before it flowers and goes to seed. And that's when it's considered cilantro. So people actually use coriander seeds as a spice, but you can also use it um, for like salsas and all kinds of different, different, different um, recipes. But I am not grow taking these for the for the spice. I am using these as gardening seeds, and they're 
um, let's see, I'm not sure how much is in here. It's got to be at least a pound. It's just a ton of seeds in here. So, um, I bought it, definitely bought it in bulk. And, um, I plan on growing just, just masses and masses this summer. Here we have some shiso. And shiso is a green. It's also called perilla, I think is what it's also called. I have seeds that I purchased from... I'm sure I bought some from Baker Creek at some point, but I bought several packets from MI Gardener. Um, and they come in like red and green shiso. It is a mint relative and everything. Um, I bought seeds at home, but the friend who came along today, she th said, you know, you could probably try it to um, water root them. So I'm going to try that too. And I'm also going to try and see how they taste. Um, since I plan on growing so, mu so much of it, It'd be nice to know what kind of what to expect and maybe how to use it. Um, it's supposed to be a super food and extremely, extremely healthy for you. Of course, I had to buy some lemongrass and these are not hard to propagate. You can just put them in water and they usually root up pretty well. And then you can plant each individual one into their own pot, into their own pot. I have foolishly in the past purchased these online from like eBay. I'm sure somebody just went to one of the Asian markets and got it and sent it to me and charged me like really upcharged me plus shipping and handling. So if you need to buy lemongrass, um, you can easily buy it from most Asian markets will have some. This is not my first time buying green cardamom. Um, one time a lady, I bought it and the lady looked at me like I was crazy and she said, what are you, what are you going to use this for? I'm sure she wanted to know what recipe. And I said, I'm going to crack open the pods and plant the seeds. So I want to grow my own green cardamom. And so I'm going to see if I can get any of these to sprout. And it was kind of spendy, but for me, it's, it's like the experiment of it. And so if it works, then I will have seeds to share with my friends and family and um, I'll probably save some seed packets for the future and try to get some going for myself. I have purchased and grown ginger and turmeric and um, um, taro um, and, or taro several times um, and I find that turmeric is very, very good for me, and I'm going to see if I can find ways to make the concoction I usually buy from Costco. It's like a liquid, and I was taking like a shot of that liquid, um, just like a little capsule, like ca just like a little shot glass of, of it every day, and for the year that I was doing that, I really saw improved mobility with my joints and so I've been pretty stiff lately and I thought you know I'm gonna try to grow these and I'll probably try using some pieces to see if I can um, save myself a little bit of money and by making it myself so turmeric is really healthy it's a beautiful plant also I have recently seen so many things about galonga which is a really beautiful version of ginger. And it's each individual piece um, of the rhizome is so much rounder and larger. It'll be really fun to see how it compares to ginger. And um, I definitely will do some videos on growing it um, and, and show how it kind of progresses over time. But I was so excited to see that they had it there. I have not seen this at the other Asian markets I've been to. So Galanga. Can you believe I just ordered cherry moya seeds? And they had cherry moya fruit there. And my friend said it looks like a dragon egg. Definitely does. Um, so I'm going to try the fruit. And it says $7.99 here, but it was marked for three. It is kind of overly ripe, I think. Um, never tried it before, which is interesting because I bought seeds for something I never tried it, and we'll see if we like it, I guess. So 
Um, the nice thing about this is even if it is overripe, I will at least have the seeds that from this fruit, I hope, that I can try growing this one as well. As well. Alright, and on top here I have taro. This is taro root, and I took some of the smaller pieces um, because I am trying to grow it, not eat it. <laughs> I guess using it as a food source is in, is in down is down the road, but I like to find pieces that have a little bit of green, like this is going to sprout, and I have planted and grown taro root so many times. It's really satisfying because the plant is related to elephant ear. Um, you know, those really giant elephant ear um, leaves are so beautiful and tropical looking and um, very expensive plants. But taro is a smaller um, relative and this is edible. So I love the idea of having some potted plants that are actually edible. Um, you know, gray, gray man crops in your own home, I guess. Um, so I am definitely going to be planting these and they're not in really great shape. They're kind of like little, they seem like a little deflated in some areas, but they're going to just be like almost like seeds and plant those. They're a lot of fun. I actually gave one to another, a colleague of mine before and it definitely looked like an elephant ear plant. And price-wise, there's no comparison. If you try to buy an elephant ear uh, rhizome, they're very, very expensive. But you can go down to your local Asian market and you can buy some taro, taro root, fresh, and plant it in a pot. And in no time at all, you'll have a plant that's just really amazing. And people will be asking you about it. What is that? What is, what is that you're growing there? Very, very interesting. So at the first store where I bought the taro root and I bought the galanga and the turmeric and the cilantro or the coriander, I bought lemongrass, I bought the cherry moya, the jackfruit candy or the jackfruit chips, the um, raw peanuts and all of that. That was $40. And then the store where I bought all the mochi and the soy sauce that I bought just basically for the container. Got lots of soy sauce at home. Um, to, so I can make a little bird feeder out of it. A little hummingbird feeder out of it. That was $30. So I spent $70 on all of these things. But this is masses and masses of coriander. Or, or cilantro. I have um, sweet potatoes and everything. Like if you were going to buy all of those things and have them shipped to you from a, a seed company or a vendor online, um, just getting the cherry moya seeds and the lemongrass would have cost me $40. And just getting the Okinawan um, sweet potatoes shipped to me probably would have cost $30. So in a way, um, cause I've got food here, but I've also got planting material. So you could definitely do this much more thrifty than I did because you don't have to do everything all at once. Um, but I kind of got so excited when I got there and I was like, Oh gosh, they have all these things I want. The Okinawan, the Okinawan sweet potatoes. They're, they're awesome. Um, I'm really excited about growing those and I'm excited about trying a lot of these other things. So, all right, everybody, um, be creative. Think of what you can grow. You don't have to go to a special market like I did. You can, you know, it peruse the, the, um, there's a lot of different like ethnic areas in like Winco, um, the, the Hispanic, uh, section for the grocery, the grocery area, um, has a lot of cool stuff in there that I've, that I've done before. Um, you can also plant stuff from, you know, just from your kitchen scraps. So lots of ideas here and I will update you on things as they go along. Everyone have a wonderful day. Hit subscribe, like, share, comment below. What of these things have you grown before? 
Um, are any of these uh, interesting to you or things that you plan on doing later on? Love to hear from you. Take care, everybody, and God bless. Bye-bye.